The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the May 14th Terrific Tuesday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that, well, tools that just simply empower human potential because living up to our potential is what we must master each and every day. So let's begin with a, an empowering belief or two, maybe even three out here. Uh, the first one from Joseph Fort Newton. And it goes like this. Not what we have, but what we use. Not what we see, but what we choose. These are the things that mar or bless the sum of human happiness. Ooh, that's a beauty out there. How about this one from Charles Lamb? The measure of choosing well is whether a man likes and finds good in what he has chosen. Of course, this one here is also a favorite of mine, really a favorite of mine, because it goes like this. Concentrate on finding your goal, then concentrate on reaching it and always. And, folks, I do mean always shoot for the moon, because if you miss it, you'll still be heading for a star. 877-927-6648. we got the markets. They're shooting for the moon right now. We've got the Dow up 37 points, trading out at 15,129. S&P at 1640, up 7 points. Looks like 1645, 1650 is on the horizon. NASDAQ up 12.5 points, trading at 3451. Russell 2000 up five points, leading the charge to the upside. That is trading at 979.29. The weak link is trying to catch up here, complete its patterns. And then, and then, folks, we may have that uh, sell in May cycle all of a sudden beginning. New York Stock Exchange up three tenths of a percent, up about 32 points, trading at 94.69 out there. The only thing uh, pulling back, the semiconductors. Semiconductors off about 50 cents here this morning. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, markets, we've got uh, flat market in the uh, currency. Euro's up like three ticks, so no big moves inside the uh, currency market. Gold just turning positive here, up two bucks, trading at fourteen thirty-six. Silver on its way to turning positive right now, only down eleven cents. Light sweet crude back fourteen cents. It is just fighting itself. It wants to get up into that hundred dollar level. As much as I don't want to see it, it looks like that's what light sweet. Crude wants to do. Platinum is up about one and seven tenths percent. That's up twenty four bucks and change out there. If you are listening in on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thank you so much for doing that. Remember, you can always get the live stream of the show by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. Over on the right hand side, you'll see that button with the three little smartphones. Click on that. The show will stream live to you, and you can always catch the archive, the replay of this on channel ten. If you'd like to see these charts in HD, well, then mosey on down to the TFNN homepage and check in and click in and sign in and test drive the Tiger's Den. You can do it for 30 days, absolutely free out there. A great peer group, a great group of traders in there. That's what you want to do. Let's begin by taking a look at the indexes, but let's start off with, as Basil likes to call it, VIXI out here. The VIX index looks to me like the S&P futures, the S&P option traders here are getting a little twitchy. A little twitchy because we've got the uh, VIX up right now. The volatility index is actually up about uh, 3% here this morning, up 37 pennies, trading at 1292. We can see it is making higher bottoms out here. So the... Uh, the uh, options players are getting a little twitchy. They're not necessarily buying into these moves higher here in the uh, market, and that is what the, that's to me, that is one of the things that the uh, VIX index shows us. So that should be something to say, hmm, something to think about. Let's go take a look at the S&P 500 here as we pull up this index. You know, we've been looking for a move up to about that 16 to 50 level. That is the top of its next primary trading range that also would run right into the top of the rising price channel coming all the way down or coming all the way up from the uh, November 14, 2012 level. I suspect 
That is what the uh, S&P wants to do. That is where it will run into some significant resistance. And then we will begin to see the uh, pullback. The pullback inside the S&P 500 will take you to the 1470-ish level out there. And that's after being up at about 16 50 is what we're calling for. So that will be quite a uh, change in uh, trend. That is on the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at the uh, composite here. The composite trying to break through this 1.618 butterfly that completed in about the 3430 level right now, trading at 3453. It also is trying to get up and test the rising price channel. Maybe about another uh, 20 uh, points or so, 20, 25 points would complete that. That won't be a complete violation of this a 1.618 butterfly out here so it too trying to test a uh, rising price channel out there and it looks like that is what it wants to do and complete you can see here after the move off of uh, jobs fridays nary a bear in sight out here nowhere last time we saw any bears inside the uh, composite was on may 1st out there otherwise no bear sightings inside the composite. If we go take a look at the Russell 2000, it is trading at 979 right now. We know the Russell had a confirmed, has a confirmed A to B equals CD up. Uh, that uh, B point, which was uh, taken out, that was a B point from April 30th. That was taken out with conviction on May 3rd, uh, both a conviction from a candle standpoint as a, a gap up as well as volume in the marketplace. As we take a look at that, A to B equals CD, what we can see is the one to one. I mean, change that to a red color and uh, let's go take a look at the one-to-one -one was completed a couple trading sessions ago oh that didn't work very well uh, well, how about that? Let, let me go back to the index out here. You can see my fat fingers getting in the way again out there. We gotta talk. Uh, we gotta talk about. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, let's take a look at the one to one to one to one point two seven two price projection on this, and that's what you would expect with only a point three eight two retracement. Should be nine eighty six eighty three. Your trade right now at nine seventy nine. Uh, 71 right now, and that is on what has been the weak link in the uh, chain. It, too, will be a week again, even though it had a confirmed A to B equals CD up. Volume has been somewhat light. We'll take a look at that as we go over and take a look at the actual ETFs, such as the IWM. As we take a look at the NDX100, that really completing yesterday the uh, 1.272 butterfly. This is the guy, the gal that we're going to have to keep our eyes on. Uh, because the 1.2, and you now it is in the overbought territory, so it is complete in that pattern. That was a pattern that was expected to have been completed because of the failure of that 0.786 Gartley sell pattern. So if the 1.272 area fails, which it has not as we speak here, this will go ahead and this will actually make a, a run. Even though it is in the overbought condition, it can still move higher. Uh, in that area, you just need to be paying attention to it and need to be watching for the bears. But 31.15 would be the uh, move out here. But it is the NASDAQ, the NDX, and the composite, in essence, that uh, we really want to be paying attention to. Now, the Russell 2000 as well, you know, that's just doing what it's supposed to do after confirming that A to B equals CD up inside the uh, marketplace. So we do have a completed pattern here, as we speak here right now, inside the NDX 100. Let's see, what have we not taken a look at here? Well, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the NYA. Let's go see what it is doing. It is trying to complete its pattern. Its pattern here is a butterfly, a 2.618 butterfly pattern. That would complete right around 94.89. Right now you're trading at 94.72. So we got a lot of patterns here trying to uh, complete themselves. The question is, will it be today? Will it be tomorrow? And we've got the options traders in the S&P getting a little twitchy here saying, hmm, maybe they're just out there uh, buying protection because of the uncertainty that they have in the markets. And, you know, it is Terrific Tuesday, and on Terrific Tuesday, we have the options hour from 12 to 1, so make sure he and the options hour is followed by Basil Chapman Show, which follows this show. So a great day of programming here at TFNN. Let's go take a look at the actual ETFs. Let's go see what we've got going on there. Today we'll go ahead and we'll start off with the IWM, the Russell 2000. We were talking about how that had been the weak link, how that is now 
trying to move up and complete its pattern on the IWM. The number is 98.55. You're trading at 97.50. You've got a nice 1.618 butterfly out there. I can see the IWM getting beyond that, trying to get beyond that and actually get inside its rising price channel. So how much higher? I don't know. Maybe another 20 or 30 percent above, 20 or 30 cents above 98.55. But it should complete that pattern. And as long as it's up there, it should go test the bottom of that rising price channel. If it gets inside the rising price channel when it gets up there the weak link will be saying hey it was a false break to the downside even though we've got big volume to the uh, downside and you can see that now when i talk about a confirmed a to b equals cd up uh, that just is taking a look at the b point from april 30th that had 30 million shares and you can see on the gap up on may the uh, 3rd 52 million uh, shares out there so that's not exactly what's taught in uh, the art of uh, timing the uh, trade because of that big volume day to the downside you typically like to see a pullback uh, on a in any retracement the bc leg on a retracement with lighter volume we certainly did not experience that on may 1st as this had 120 million shares to the uh, downside out here but nonetheless we only had a point three eight two retracement we had a gap up as was clo uh, passing that b point that says you have to respect you have to respect what is then currently going on in the market and the iwm if we take a look at the volume really light you know yesterday 22 million shares a day before 39 and to my knowledge yesterday Day was not, I repeat, was not a holiday out there. So why would it have holiday type volume in the uh, marketplace? So no conviction now, really, as it move as it makes its way higher. Let's go take a look at the uh, queues here. Uh, the queues also really somewhat uh, lacking conviction. The queues though getting up over now today. The uh, one point two seven two butterfly seventy three oh eight is what shows up on my chart. It's really seventy three ten would be the exact. Point one point two seven two expansion, and that expansion would be of the September nineteenth swing point high, seventy dollars and fifty eight cents, down to the low on November the sixteenth at sixty one thirty one out there. Right now, you got the Qs trading at seventy three forty five. A volume yesterday was okay, twenty nine million shares. But you know, folks, if you take a look at the uh, volume uh, as we had uh, as this on May second, as Jobs Fridays uh, came. Job Friday came in, which was really the following session, I believe. Yeah, May the third out there, thirty-four million shares. No real conviction, and also uh, lighter volume as the uh, X point. So this is a tiger. This is a tiger butterfly that has formed thus far. If the one point two, and we can see that it is truly in the overbought uh, territory, higher overbought uh, from a relative strength indicator standpoint than it was back as it made a high in September of 2012, September 19th. That had 36 million shares. We have not had any types of uh, volume like that as that X point was crossed. So we got a tiger butterfly in the works, a 1.272 tiger butterfly. Do you trade it right here, right now? Absolutely not. You wait for at least the bears to show up, and they'll show up, and they cannot disguise themselves. You will see some type of bearish reversal signal in the market. Not yet to be seen out here, so not so fast. As we take a look here at the uh, diamonds, we'll do that when we come back from the uh, break here. The diamonds now getting above the highs of May 9th. That was 151.37. Four million shares on that uh, trading session yesterday. 3.3 million shares so far today. 1.1 million shares, a little bit more volume inside the DIA. 877-927-6648. Dow's up 44 points. We'll be right back. TFNN is excited to launch our brand new software charting program, The Art of the Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, Art of the Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. Art of the Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new, outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV... 
TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow is up 41 points right now. S&P is up 8.5. Trade at 1642. 1645, 1650 is absolutely in sights now. Let's go back. We'll take a look at the uh, Dow Diamonds, uh, the ETF for the uh, Dow right now. It is uh, trying to tackle its most recent highs, which came in on May the 9th. That high was 151.37. Four million shares up in that uh, trading session. Uh, we have gotten up and over 151.40 is the uh, number that we have hit over by, uh, excuse me, over by three pennies. And it's got some decent volume today. But as you can see, as the uh, diamonds got over the uh, April 11th swing point, we had that gap up. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of volume on the uh, move higher inside the uh, marketplace. So that's the Dow Diamonds. We took a look at the uh, Qs. We took a look at the IWM. That leaves for us the spies out here. So the spies now over the 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD up. The uh, spies here headed for the top of that rising price channel. That should get us into about the 164, 165 ish range. Well, it's in the 164 range right now. So 165, 166 out there. And uh, that is a rising price channel that takes you all the way back into the uh, November 16th time frame. No real uh, bears in sight inside any of these ETFs or, quite frankly, inside much of the uh, markets here right now. So the bears are in hibernation. Let's go take a look here at, uh, we haven't done this here for a while, so let's go, well, first let's go take a look at gold, silver, 
uh, light sweet crude bonds, and then we'll go take a look at some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, ETFs, the spider ETFs for the sectors inside the S and P 500, like the energy sector, technology sector, financial sector. So we'll go take a look at those. But first, let's start off by taking a look at uh, gold here. Let's go see what uh, gold is uh, doing today. Gold here. I'll go ahead and actually remove this. Move it off to the side, but you're looking at a sideways trading range. That's what that yellow box is. Uh, gold has been consolidating ever since the April 25th uh, time frame. Uh, today, uh, you know, trading a little bit up above uh, of yesterday. But really, we're looking at a 50-point consolidation range. It's going to break to the upside or to the downside here. Looks more likely that it's going to move to the downside, come back and test at least the April 16th level. A bullish case. The bullish case, because we know that the uh, we know that the uh, large commercials out there, they're they've taken the largest net uh, short position or smallest net short position in uh, in in really, I mean, quite some time back in the 2008 lows out there. So we know the big guys are in the camp that gold is going to be putting in a nice bottom out here. So what you'd ultimately like to now see, and we also know that the that the non-reportables, the individual traders, they've taken the largest net short position, and they are typically in the wrong side of the boat, and I think that's going to capsize, and there's going to be a few drownings out there. The Red Cross is going to have to go out and try to rescue some of those folks that are in the short side. So what you'd like to see ultimately bullish or bearish you want to see a test of that april 16th uh candle uh that uh, low out there you've got some decent uh, volume uh that uh, session the high is 1404.20 that is what you'd like to see a little push down test 1404.20 rejected on less than 700,000 contracts and then it could be off to the uh, races but not until that happens are we going to get a release of information or at least a break of the uh, consolidation uh, area and we have not seen that yet and if gold can do that then that's going to set up simultaneously silver going down and actually testing the lows so ideally we'll see gold test now I don't have a problem with gold testing the lows of that swing point, but the setup right now looks like we'd see silver testing the lows, $22, even Steven. It's trading at 23.53 right now. Still trading with inside that uh, swing point, quite frankly. Volume there is 200,000 uh, contracts. So what you would ideally like to uh, see is a, a test of $22, a close back above it on less than 200,000 shares, and then you can say fire away, as I think that we are putting now. The price projection, ideally, of course, the price projection or the pattern that Stevo would like to see is this one. That's the uh, weekly chart, and that's the .786 Gertley buy. That would be in the $17 range out there. So we'll just have to be patient, see which of these two patterns uh, – uh, works uh, in the case of silver if it closes below that april 16th swing point then this was the chart you'd want to be paying attention to this is the chart that shows at about the 17 30 ish type range uh, and you'd be looking for some bulls to come in that is where you would want to uh, go ahead and take a look at putting in a position inside silver high ho silver if we go take a look at light sweet crude here light sweet crude is uh, still above the uh, b point it has a confirmed a to b equals cd up as much as as I hate to say it, much to my chagrin, 98.30, 98.89 is the uh, first target. But I think it, if we can get the, if light sweet crude starts to move, gets above May 6th high, 97.17, we're looking at 101.29. 877-927-6648. We get back. We'll go finish off by taking a look at bonds. Bonds are saying, hmm, not so fast. We'll be right back, folks. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is uh, trading out at 15.155, up 64 points right now. S&P 500 up at 16.45. The uh, high of the uh, day, 1645.31. We're 1645.26, 1650.00. I can smell it. It's just around the corner. But don't be partying too early, folks. That could be all she wrote out here. As we take a look at a couple of things in the marketplace that are saying not so fast. Well, we talked about the uh, VIX index uh, earlier, and that is uh, kind of saying, hmm, something to think about. Let's take a look at the 30-year uh, Treasury. That, too, is uh, saying, hmm, maybe not so fast out here. Right now, as we take a look at the 30-year uh, Treasury, we're looking at the uh, – at the June contract here, what we are looking at is the uh, consolidation that it had broken out of. That was on January 2nd. It was the top of that that uh, really began the uh, consolidation from that high down to the lows, traveled the consolidation area, uh, did it all the way until we broke out of that consolidation level on April the uh, 3rd. Now, when you break out of a consolidation, whether it's horizontal, well, it's a horizontal if it's consolidation, whether it's a rising or de uh, declining uh, price channel out there, uh, typically price will come back and try to get in and wants to join the party. Well, in this case here, bonds just simply took off. They completed the the uh, the move, which is equal to the consolidation uh, level, and that consolidation level 
went from the uh, 144 29 level all the way down to the uh, lows of uh, March the 8th out at 14. made its way up there then had one heck of a uh, bearish engulfing uh, candle that was on jobs Friday that was on May the uh, 3rd out there big huge uh, candle but all that really has occurred thus far is bonds have come back and they've tested what they should have tested really originally when they tried to break through that area well now they have uh, come back and they've tested it we're not seeing bonds here now look they're not doing anything miraculous but they're also not selling off today not like the uh, market is moving higher that's got to make you that's got to make you say hmm something to think about out here in fact quite frankly you get a close today let's assume the market continues and closes up near its session highs and you get bonds to close above 144.29 boy that would really have to make you stop and think because then that would be a rejection of getting back inside the lower part of that uh, of that consolidation and that would really would want to make me say hmm, something to think about in fact it Obviously, it does. That's why I just shared that with you. Now, let's go take a look at a, other, a couple of other things that are non-confirming out here, and that's really what you look for, uh, especially as you're running into resistance levels. And a couple of those are the other correlations that go on inside the uh, marketplace. So one of those correlations, you've heard me talk about this before, and that is the euro-yen. As we take a look at the euro-yen, Japanese-yen uh, uh, currency pair out here, this tracks the S&P 500 better than any other currency pair that you will find out there. Why? doesn't really matter why. It just simply does. And you want to be aware of any divergences because what's going to win out when you see divergences is going to be the currency marketplace. Right now, up in the upper portion of the screen, you're looking at the S&P 500. You can see that little squiggly line on its way up to that 1650 area. That's at the top of that rising, uh, not the rising, that's the, well, it's the top of both the rising price channel as well as the, uh, the bottom or the top of the next primary trading range, the one that is traveling in here. Here right now so you're seeing that move up what you are seeing in the bottom right hand side is the actual euro japanese yen currency pair just simply using some line charts here it's a little bit easier to visually see you can see i've identified where we have in the past had divergence pat divergent patterns out here and we're seeing a, a real uh, we're seeing right now a shorter term one we're seeing a shorter term one really ever since uh, i would say the highs here of about uh, May the 9th, something like that. I don't have the actual date out there. Uh, but uh, what we are taking a look at here is certainly some divergence. We're watching the S&P move higher, and we're watching the Euro-Yen trade sideways to slightly lower out there. So that is one of those other patterns that has to make you pause for a moment. Well, we know the other one, this one has been uh, diverging for quite some time, and that is the uh, high-grade copper out here. We can see that is uh, moving uh, lower as well as the S&P moving higher. Those are things that just simply are not normal. And it is typically high-grade copper that uh, helps to identify where the next move in the uh, market will come from. doesn't give you the timing. So in the timing standpoint, that's why we use pattern uh, recognition for doing that. And right now we're just simply using a, a rising uh, price channel and overhead horizontal resistance in that 1650 level. And it uh, looks like you know, we may, in fact, get that uh, today. And uh, that would be, uh, I would say, if you're long, just simply have uh, tighten up your sh tighten up your uh, stops. That's all. Uh, so that is uh, those are two. There's a third one out there. I won't go uh, into it, but there is a, a third non-confirming uh, correlating pattern in the uh, marketplace, and uh, and that has not changed as well. I peeked in on that a little bit earlier, also. So that is inside. Uh, that's inside the markets. Let's go take a look at some of the spider ETFs out here. See what's going on inside the uh, S and P. 500 sector must be the uh, energy sector the financial sector that is on the uh, move this morning so let's start off with the uh, financials that is pulling the uh, boat up here financials trading out at 1956 uh, absolutely nice uh, strength out here yesterday uh you uh you you know did set a sideways day but there was some nice volume inside the xlf on may the 8th 63 million shares so far today a newer high with 8 million shares with just over an hour in trading so you've got some decent volume uh inside this as uh, well uh, if we put this back on a, a longer term chart on a, a weekly chart out here and let's go do that on the uh, weekly chart Boy, it's, ri it's inside that rising price channel. It actually says the financials want to make a, a move up into the 22-ish level, 
right now trading at 1956. What we can see is the financials here are dangerously making a higher high with less relative strength out there. Now, it's not a problem until the actual bears show up in the uh, marketplace, and they are not to be found inside the uh, financials, the XLF. Let's go take a look at the uh, energy sector. Of course, we know the energy sector. That's like taking a look at ExxonMobil, Chevron, Schlumberger, and maybe one or two others because that, in essence, is what the XLE is as those uh, three, four, Five equities represent about 60% of the energy sector itself. Right now, the energy sector coming all the way back and now testing its 2007 highs, or 2011 highs. My apology. Now, that high out there, let's actually make sure I grab the right one here. Oh, I, I have it written down. How about that? I already did that because I knew that I had made that mistake earlier. Now, the only thing I don't have in here is the volume. So let's go add that to that little blue marker out here. Now that we are there, 8097, March the 31st, and volume is 18.8 million shares out here. So let me add that into uh, this little marker. It makes it a little bit easier and less confusing for me, and I don't like to give out bad information. 18.8 million, that is at the uh, swing point. And let's go see what kind of volume we've got. Now, coming up into that area uh, was rejected with lighter volume. That was on May 9th. That had 8.1 million shares. Today, we're going to test it again. It is already testing it. And that level, so far, we've done 3.6 million shares. If this volume were to keep up, well, then you'd have about an 18 million share a day. We'll see if that happens. Otherwise, you've got a second failure, second, maybe even a third failure. Let's see here. The trading session of May 7th, it got to 80.98. Oh, that was a failure on 9.7 million shares. Then we had a failure. Was on the next session too, 80.91? No, but certainly was on May the 9th. So we've already had two failures of that swing point high, and that is, again, March from March 31st, 2011. That is on the XLE, the energy sector. No bears in sight here. Let's go take a look at the uh, technology sector, the XLK out here. The XLK now completing its 100% move of a move after blowing off that .786 Gartley cell pattern. actually worked. Uh, that pattern worked and found its uh, support down by the uh, gap up from January the uh, 2nd. Uh, out there, and then once it blew through the area of about 3063, truly the gap up on May the 3rd said, well, it was going to go complete at least the initial test, which was a test of the swing point high from September 19th. But you can see volume-wise, which only has 17 million shares out there, as the XLK has gotten into that level, 8.4 million shares from two sessions ago. Yesterday was 8.7 million shares. So far today, 1.5 million shares. So it doesn't have the volume pattern to blow that area away, at least not just yet. So those are the three important sectors to be taking, to be taking, to be paying attention, of, at least from the weighting structure inside the uh, inside the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at that consumer staples area. Consumer staples area now trying to get above its very bearish downdraft uh, session here, which was from April 24th. That had 30 million shares to the uh, downside. You're up over that area today, and you're doing it with 1.7 million shares. You want to say, I don't think so? Yeah, that is so the consumer staples. Now, we know there was Procter & Gamble, which was the uh, big kahuna that uh, started the uh, rollover inside the uh, consumer staples. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this area is being taken out with, with light volume. Even if you use the April 23rd swing point high, which you would use, by the way, that's 41.44. You're up over it. You're at 41.47. That has 13 million shares. Even on the most liberal, multiplying 1.7 million shares times 6.5, which would be an overstatement, you still don't even get up over a what we'll call a light volume, high volume session from April the 23rd out there. So consumer staples, which has been kind of a defensive play and has uh, had a, a nice move off of November 16th, that's kind of making you say, hmm, something to uh, think about. Uh, let's go see what other sectors should we uh, look at, see if there's anything else to really look at inside here. we got the utility sector. That's trading uh, up just uh, slightly. That had formed a 1.618 uh, butterfly. You can see uh, that one. Well, I'm assuming that it did. Let's actually go ahead and draw that in and see maybe made even a little bit more than that. Let me first do. No, it made a. How about that? There's your perfect 
1.618 uh, pattern. Now, you know, folks, you may not have that uh, drawing tool that I have, uh, and uh, which I ident- which uh, uh, you know colors in the uh, butterflies out here. But if you'd like to have a drawing tool that does, then mosey on over to the homepage of tfnn.com and sign up for the art of the uh, chart. It's an absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the art of the uh, chart up on the uh, screen here, and let me show you how easy it is, folks. Uh, I'm just going to hit this little button up here. It says create a new stock list from a web source, a clip file, a clipboard, or a text file. That means you can put your own stock charts in here. But here's the beauty. You click on this little button here, download Gartley lists, and voila, there you go. All of the Gartley patterns that uh, either have or are setting up so that you can immediately go over and you can take a look at those. You can test drive this software. comes with a 30-day uh, uh, money-back guarantee. And what you want to do is you want to take advantage of our Tiger Dollar promotion, which we only do a couple of times a, a year out here. In this case, what you would be getting is a nice 20% bonus on your money. So that's nice to be able to get your money to make money. That's for anything $500 or more. And top of that, on top of that, you're gonna. We're going to get uh, donated in your name anywhere between five to ten percent to the one fund for all those folks up in uh, Boston out there. So do yourself a favor and go over there and uh, do that and let the system. You know you can't make up. You know you, money you can make up. You can do that in a heartbeat. Time you can't make up for uh, time and you know so many great applications with inside the art of the uh, chart out there. I love that art of the uh, chart and that's what it is. It's all about art. Now if we go take a look at the actual butterfly pattern when you have one pattern fail it'll move up to the next level and that's what we have inside the utilities and that is coming off of the uh, swing point high here from august the first that high 3854 i'll go ahead we'll draw this in here and we can see that this thing made a uh, perfect uh, 1.618 uh, gartley uh, cell pattern or butterfly cell pattern let's go ahead and erase the uh, rest of these here just so that we have something more beautiful to look at there you go inside the utilities the art of the chart would have picked that up inside the xlu so you wouldn't have had to do that because it was scanning you know 4900 plus instruments out there everything inside the nyse it would have picked up on the xlu you would have seen that 1.618 butterfly cell and then on top of that you would have said hey steve have the bears shown up should i go ahead and maybe take a look at selling that position and of course i would have said on may day they most certainly did you saw a little bear sash candle out there and that was inside the uh, xlu out here that's what we're looking at on my uh, screen let me just refresh this uh, chart make sure i've got uh, active data now here's the next thing that you're going to want to pay attention to inside the xlu and that's a candle right here from may the uh, 10th so if you want to take a look at you know a number of different things to be paying attention to and what's going on inside the uh, marketplace well go take a look at the hammer candle on may the 10th because that's what it formed down there and if you get a close below 3946 on that hammer candle if you're long you know the rest of it you're wrong and by wrong this says that the xlu the utility sector will move down to this high volume bar here which will take you to march 15th that'll be down into the uh, 3776 level it's trading at 3995 so the bulls here trying to defend a portion of their position here on may the 10th uh, 10 million shares 39.46 is the number. You close below that, and it is uh, K Sarah Sarah for the XLU. Uh, let's go see what else do we have out here. How about if that just finishes it off for our look inside the S and P 500? And let's go take a look at some of these uh, stocks here that are moving in the marketplace. In fact, let's uh, switch all the way back over. Let's go see what we've got going on inside the uh, Dow. 30. Let's go take a look at uh, IBM, see what uh, that is doing. We know we've had IBM with some volume off of the top and with the market moving the way that it is. How about IBM? Is it uh, is it moving along or is it just chugging? Looks to me like this is nothing more than a little chug here. The uh, Dow or the IBM, the IBM, IBM not even able to get up to the uh, bottom of the downdraft day from April 18th. $206.15. Not really much of a move today inside IBM as well. That ought to make you say, hmm, something to think about. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Thanks.
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Off to the moon we go. You've got the Adal up 78 points, straighten out at 15, 170 right now. S&P watch of 1650. Uh, only a few points away right now, trade at 16.47. Three points to uh, go before it uh, touches that uh, level out there. We'll see what happens. Uh, moving in the marketplace right now, Priceline is the leader in the clubhouse, up $13 and change. Google right behind them, up 9.85. Inter Oil, Car Inter Oil Corp. 
up 10% this morning, up 8 bucks and change. MasterCard participating, charging the market here, $8.61. Biogen Bib, $7.82 to the upside. Stratasys up 7 bucks and change. LinkedIn. We'll go take a look at LinkedIn. That's up six fifty. Chipotle Mexican Grill up six forty. BlackRock up four ninety seven. Goldman Sachs up four bucks. Sherwin Williams participating as well, up three dollars and eighty five cents. To the downside here, well, you got a couple pay, uh, companies pushing paper. Suburban Propane, Western Gas, both of them pushing out some paper. Solar City down about two bucks. That's off five percent. Toyota Motor down about one sixty seven. Health Insurance Innovations H double IQ off ten percent this morning. That's off a buck sixty five. Apple, Apple. Somebody's taking a bite out of Apple. It is off a buck forty four here as we uh, speak. So let's go uh, peek in here on. Uh, let's go look at uh, LinkedIn L N K D. That has been one of the stronger equities in the uh, marketplace. And let's take a look at that. See what it is doing. This thing looks like all it's doing is going to come back and test its downdraft. It's got an island reversal candle formation out here. That island reversal was established here between. Between the three candles of May 1st, that high, 195.50. May the uh, 2nd, the low, 196.43. That created that first gap. And then, voila, boom, bang. That was volume off of the top on May 3rd. 11 million shares to the uh, downside. So now what you've got, you've got LinkedIn trying to participate here. Only 1.2 million shares going against 11 million shares from May the uh, 3rd. So at this stage, it uh, looks like really doing nothing more than setting up its next leg down, an additional short opportunity. Now, I don't know that you go short this equity because of the strength that it has had. In fact, what I would be looking is I'd be looking more to be a buyer of LinkedIn, uh, assuming that it does not have any additional huge volume uh, off of its uh, highs out here as it makes its way back into the February 8th time frame. Nice 14 million share uh, move up, gap up off of February 8th, whether it's in the 140 range, 150 range, or maybe it closes the gap and gets all the way back to about the 126 level from February the 7th. So uh, you did have a nice move off, but I think that's more of a, well, it, it's it's hard to say what that what that is at the uh, moment, but uh, you know there's other if you're going to go short stocks, look for something that's weaker than something like uh, LinkedIn out there. Uh, if we go peek in real quickly here, let's take a look at a couple of the uh, Dow stocks uh, that have also had some volume off of uh, their highs and see how they are performing. Well. I guess we got Bank of America. That didn't have volume off the highs, but that's what popped up on my screen. Even though you can't see it, it's because I can't see it. So there we go. Bank of America, though, completing uh, two AB equals CD patterns. Uh, the first one coming off of the uh, lows back here in December of 2011. Your A point was 504. Your B point was the swing point high from March 19, 2012. 1010 was that high all the way down to the C point. It looks like a normal retracement level. That was on May 21st down at 6. 72. The 1 to 1.272 has now been completed. 1330 is the number. We have seen 1331 today. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman is up next. And then on Tuesdays, we've got the options hour. Following that, we've got our man Daryl Martin and then David White. And then, of course, the Tom O'Brien. Oh, uh, we also have Andy Hecht from 3 to 4 and Tom O'Brien from 4 to 6. Folks, always remember that the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Have a great day, folks. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care.